It's a rotary vane pump. There's a different filter configurations. Everyone's a little different depending on, on uh, wh whose unit you're replacing or where you're putting it at. So what is, uh, for this particular model, there's filters inside in the end to kind of muffle it. And uh, these get dirty. You need to replace them. The kit for rebuilding it comes with all the parts that need to be replaced. So you basically unscrew these filters here and take them out first before you disassemble the unit. So just pull them out of there and you can replace them with the new ones after a while. Take the top filter off and just set it to the side and go ahead and replace them, use parts later. So take a wrench and loosen all these. Got five bolts here. Take seven sixteenths socket. Go ahead and take them out of there. Behind this is nothing but in a chamber. There's nothing you're gonna hurt on the back side of this where them filters are at. So just take your rubber hammer and tap it. Okay. And there it is. So that's inside. It's configured to where uh, to where it reduces some noise. Three eighths socket takes off this front plate. So inside of here is some carbon veins and they're on a rotor that's cantered that produces a pressure. So just take your rubber mallet and knock that part off. There's your, um, there's your end plate, okay? You can take this off, not necessary, but you can take it off if you need to get in there. Um, these veins, after time wear or break, and what will happen is they need to be replaced. So what you do, if you look at the angle that vein is set in there. There's a taper on the end of it, and you'll see that here as well. You see that taper. The vein needs to be installed with the taper the same direction you took it out of. So as you can see, the taper, the leading edge is forward for that rotation. So just pull them out. And uh, replace them with the new ones. Obviously, this is a new pump, so, so they're in good shape. One of the other things happens, this housing can drop down a little bit. If you notice, the tolerance is very, very tight between there. So as this thing sucks in the air, it pushes it around the rotor and pushes it out on the outlet end. So you want to be sure that you're, this is not dragging the rotor. If it is, loosen these two Allen screws, pick it up, and make sure it spins freely. So we've cleaned up the inside of the housing. We've cleaned out these slots. These slots you can clean them out with a little embry or something like that. But what you need to be sure, you know, on the units as they get, get used, that, that the uh, vein goes in and out correctly. So if them slots are dirty or rusted, that vein won't fall down like that. And that's what you want that vein to do every time. So if it doesn't fall down like that, you won't be getting the performance. So be sure they slide in, not easy. So now we're ready to go ahead and put it back together. So we'll stick all our veins in there and uh, make sure again that they're correct direction. You see the leading edge, this thing is turning clockwise from your, from your direction when you're facing it. So you see the leading edge drags like that. The vein has to go in that way. If you put the vein in backwards, you won't have any performance. You can see how there's no meat on that housing when you're making the rotation. So just be sure that the vein is in the pump correctly and make sure they all slide good in and out as you're assembling it. Just like that. So now that everything's good. You're, you haven't changed anything with the rotor other than to clean it, the back was good. You cleaned the inside of this well you're ready to reassemble it. So go ahead and put your cover back on. That sometimes takes a little bit of doing. It's not bad, it's just kind of a tight fit. Just tap it around there a little bit till you get it where you want it. Okay. Then put your cover on. You have a gasket that comes with it. It's a shim gasket that goes back on there. Go ahead and get this thing started. Put your screws in there, but don't tighten them up. Put your bolts in there, but don't tighten them up. Just kind of get them started a little bit. And you, you want to, uh, before you start this thing, make sure that your tolerances are good. 
and we'll show you how to do that in just a minute while we're inserting these bolts and tightening them up. Because if you over tighten it, what will happen is the veins will rub on the end plate and the motor won't spin correctly because the tolerances are very close in order to keep maximum performance from the unit. When you tighten them too, you want to tighten them across from each other, normal torquing. Don't, uh, don't overdo it. We want to plug it in, but don't stand in front of here. Obviously, one's intake and one's exhaust. Your intake's here as it comes around the bottom of there. It picks up the air in between the veins and blows it out the exhaust. But you want to, at this point, start it up and then torque these down. If you over-tighten them, um, if you don't have a torque wrench or in the field or whatever, and you over-tighten them, it won't start up, it'll be rubbing. If you under tighten them, the screws come loose. So let me go ahead and plug it in and then we'll tighten it up. It'll get kind of noisy here, but uh, this is kind of an infield procedure if you don't have a torque wrench with you. Now, if you heard the way that shut off, you heard it kept spinning for a little bit. If you have it too tight, when you shut it off, it'll just stop immediately, just like that. And, and you know it's obviously too tight. Torque wrench is the best way. Go by the manufacturer's recommendation. But you're in the field. You don't have a torque wrench. You need to do um, a good job while you're out here. That's another alternative. The back of these bolt heads are um, locking bolt heads. So when you tighten it up, it'll stay tight. So I feel comfortable that we did a good job there. It stopped good, started good. We'll go ahead and put the muffler side of it on now. We've changed the gasket that come in the kit. And we'll just get these bolts tightened up in here and torque them the same way. i give her a little bit of a tightening. Okay, and that should do it for that. Went ahead and replaced our filters on the inlet and our rubber O-rings. So we'll take them O-rings. We can do that two ways. We can either set them here initially, which normally doesn't work too well, or we go ahead and just put them back here on this end. Sometimes they'll break when you take it out and you don't want to put new ones in there. There's replacement parts available, obviously. Just go ahead and screw it in there easy. Make sure that your rubber stays in place. Your O-ring, when you do it, just give her a little snugging by hand. It doesn't have to be severely tight. You over tighten it, they'll break. Especially if the unit's an older unit, they get pretty brittle. And you may consider just ordering some when you get a kit. So just tighten them up like that. Okay. We've replaced our, our filter on the external filter. The element's been replaced. And any of these, as I said earlier, you can clean with soap and water, but make sure they're good and dry whenever you go ahead to uh, to reinstall them because you want to suck that water through there then it'll rust inside of there with that rotor and that housing and and you'll have a problem okay now that we got the unit rebuilt we're going to check the health of the motor we'll go ahead and plug it in do an amperage check and make sure that we're within motor nameplate on the amp draw <laughs> So, looks like the motor's in good shape, so we're ready to reinstall it.